And if you didn't hear before, you just need weights tonight. Um, and I'll explain when we get into our first exercise what else you might need. All right, 30 jumping jacks whenever you guys are ready. All right, 30 and shake it out. Stand up nice and tall. Let's look over our right shoulder. And back through center, look over your left shoulder. Back to center, we'll tilt down towards our right shoulder, right ear to right shoulder. And switch to the opposite side, left ear, left shoulder. Back through center, we'll do our head rolls, drop the chin to the chest, around to the right. Three full circles to the right, take your time. Eyes open. And then three to the left. Take a deep breath. And find your way back to center. We'll start working our way down to our shoulders, bring them up by your ears, drop them down to the front. Start with the shoulder rolls. After you get a couple in, start add those elbows. And then arm circles all the way up around and forward. Let's do two more and then we'll reverse. Just the shoulders up around and back. Adding the elbows. And then big arm circles up around and back. Two more. And then coming out to the side, crossing in front, alternating the arm that's on top, just letting them swing. Feel that stretch from your armpit down the side of your arm. Two more. And let's shake it on out. Moving into our hip hinges, so feet come right underneath your hips, knees unlock, hands on your hips, send your tailbone back, chest up. Start to feel that stretch in the back of your legs. Two more. And coming up to standing, let's keep those feet wide. We're gonna do our hip tilts. So tilting the right hip up first. Remember, try to keep your legs straight if you can. You're feeling that stretch, the inner part of your thigh, inner part of your hip. Breathe and see if you can push a little bit more. And back to your center, let's switch. Other side, tilt, 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 deep breath. And back to center, walk those feet in just a couple inches so we can do our hip circles. Going to the left first, front, side, and back. Same thing, let's do three around. And then we'll switch. Three full circles and then reverse. And coming back to center, bring those feet underneath your hips. So let's bring our hands to our kneecaps. We'll do our knee circles. And we'll get into our calf stretches. Down around right, two more, and then reverse. Down around to the left. Two more. And then slowly rolling it all the way up. We're just going to that calf stretch. So lunge style stance, back heel stays on the ground. Front leg is gonna bend and extend. Just you feel that in the back of that calf. Keep your hips pointed forward. Both heels are on the ground. 
knees going as far forward as you can go without letting the heel up. Getting some ankle mobility as well. Do two more and we'll switch. And take your time to switch to the other side, opposite leg forward, opposite leg back. Bend and extend that front leg, press that back heel back into the ground. Let's do two more. And coming up to standing, bring those feet back in. We're just going to do our ankle stretches, pointing and flexing our right foot first. And then circles around to the right. And reverse circles around to the left. Shake it on out and switch, point and flex with the left. And then ankle circles around and reverse. And shake it on out. Alrighty guys, so all supersets tonight. So all two exercises back to back. This first set is where you're going to need, um, I said, get something that brings your heels up like one to two inches. I'm gonna use a weight plate because I have that. But you could use a book if you don't mind putting your heels on it. If you've got something like a piece of wood, um, anything that's solid that you can put your heels up on. We're gonna be putting our heels up on the object. Our feet are gonna come out to the side. So the, probably like three quarters of my foot is on the mat. It's just my heels that I'm really propping up. And then from here, I'm gonna drop it down in kind of a narrow stance squat. So whatever you feel comfortable enough with having that amount of weight back on. Like I said, a book works, piece of wood might work. Um, and we're gonna be doing this goblet style for our squats. So you do need one of your weights. If you're feeling um, really uncomfortable, super narrow, you can prop your feet up maybe on two things and go into more of our standard squat stance. But if you can, we're actually gonna to try to do this a little bit more narrow today. We're gonna to really work on our quadriceps. So you're gonna take your one weight, you're gonna bring it to the center of your chest, just like you would for your goblet squat. You can see that my toes are pointed out kind of at a 45 degree angle. So they're not perfectly straight. Heels are elevated. You wanna think really sit back, push those hips back and let those knees come out. You're gonna drop it down and then you're gonna press drive through those heels and come straight up, okay? So we're gonna go for 12. Having your heels elevated should allow you to kind of drop down maybe a little further to what you normally can do for a squat. But the narrow stance is gonna change things up as well. So get those knees tracking the same direction as your toes. And once you reach your 12, you can set your weight down. If you really have nothing to prop your heels up on, you could just try to do like a narrow stance squat too. You're just probably not gonna be able to drop it as low um, if you don't have the heels propped up a little bit. All right, so second motion, the first superset is where you guys need all the props. And then after that, all you're gonna need is weights. <laughs> is our light weight. So if you have weights that are five pounds and under, that's probably ideal. If you don't, what I want you to do, because we're gonna do an exercise and I'm gonna ask you to do 20 pulsing repetitions. So 20 is a high number. So do as many as you can with your weight. And if you need to stop kind of partially through, drop the weight and just try to keep going, okay? So the motion is gonna be external rotation pulses, okay? So we're gonna take both our weights that are gonna come straight out from our chest. My elbows are bent and they're right, they're glued to my side, okay? Shoulders are dropped down. I'm gonna come out as wide as I can, like I'm opening up two doors. And from here, I'm gonna pulse, okay? So I'm gonna pulse out, squeeze my shoulder blades, and then release back to here, okay? So it's gonna be short, fast pulses. We're gonna do this for 20. So when you're ready, go ahead and start pulsing. Like I said, do as many as you can with the weight, and then drop them if you need to.
pull those shoulder blades together. Once you reach 20, you can set your light weights down off to the side. That's a really nice like activation to do if you are someone that sits on a computer or if you find like you're more like this most of the day. Um, even doing that without weight kind of gets your rotator cuffs and shoulders back in the right position, kind of opens you up as well. So that's not a bad one to do to give yourself some computer breaks throughout the day. We are going to be two, doing two more sets of both. So we're going to be going back to that narrow stance, heel elevated goblet squat. It's quite a long name for an exercise. <laughs> so you want to get your heels back up onto your, onto your book or onto your ledge or whatever you're using. Toes are going to be angled out to the side. You're taking your one wake. It's coming right at the chest height, holding it in the center. When you're ready, you're gonna push back, weight on your heels, and then push those knees outwards, drop it down as low as you can comfortably go, keeping the chest up, and then drive back up. Second set of 12 when you're ready. Thinking about dropping your hips down, as you push your knees out. And once you reach your 12, carefully bring your heels off of your object, set your heavier weight out to the side, grab onto those lighter weights, and we're gonna go into those rotational pulses. So making those 90 degree angles, elbows by your side, shoulders down, relax your neck, arms come out, and then you're pulsing for 20, whenever you're ready. Squeeze those shoulder blades together every time. Plenty. And then you can set those lighter weights down, shake it on out. Getting our posture set up for the rest of the night. Nice work guys. So we're gonna go through one more set here. You want to try to use a heavier weight if you're finding like your range of motion, you're doing pretty well in it for this type of squat and you want to add weight, feel free to add it on. It's going to be our last set here. Like I said, elevating your heels usually allows you to have a little bit more range of motion in your squat. So sometimes you can kind of use that to your benefit. So heels are up, toes are out. If you have a wider lip to stand on, like I said, you can kind of take yourself out to a little bit more of a, our natural, normal squat stance. Weight comes up to your chest, hold those shoulders down, hips back, knees out, last time through for 12. All right, 12, set that heavier weight off to the side, grab those lighter weights, both of them. Last time with our rotational pulses, really feel those shoulder blades opening up on here. 90 degree angle, shoulders down, out to the side and pulse. Twenty, twenty total. Once you get those twenty, set those waist down to the side, shake out those arms, and now you can remove. If you need to move that book or piece of wood or whatever you were using to prop your heels up. 
you need to move it out of the way, go ahead and do so. No more fancy props <laughs> for the rest of the evening. All right, so moving on to our next superset, guys, you do need two weights for both of our exercises. Uh, our first one tonight, we're going to be doing our, our um, 1.5 deadlift, but tonight we're going to use two weights. So a lot of times we're focused on our single leg and we're doing one weight. Today we're going to use two weights, which is going to steady you a bit more, but we're going to keep the foot on the ground because you might not be quite there yet to do two weights with the, with the foot coming back. That might be a little bit too much balance. So we're just going to do the version where we keep that back foot, the, the toe just resting on the floor. Okay. So the 1.5, this is the 0.5. So most of my weight is in my standing leg. Otherwise it's gonna look the same. I'm gonna hinge, most of that weight is on that left hamstring and then I'm gonna come back up to standing. If you're feeling confident in your single leg deadlift um, and with the two weights, you feel like you can lift the leg and come back down with control, you can feel free to move on. That would be kind of the next step. But otherwise, this is a good time to kind of practice you might even try as we go, if you're feeling good, like maybe hover, like tap up that foot a couple of times just to see where your balance stands. Um, but we're gonna try it both sides. So we're gonna be doing 10 aside. So I'm gonna start standing on my left leg. I've got my right toe on the ground and just think hinge with both hips equally pointed back, chest stays lifted, reach back and stand. We're gonna do 10. Back is flat, so you're not rounding. Pick a point a couple feet in front of you to keep your focus on. Standing leg is unlocked, but it's not bending. And once you reach 10 on one side, we're gonna switch around, find that balance again. So now I'm standing on my right side. My left leg is behind me. I'm not putting weight on that toe. It's just there to help me balance. And once I'm ready, I'm gonna start on my right side. Back flat, reaching down as far as I can go with control, standing back up. Ten total. Once you reach your ten, shake out those legs a bit. Come back through to center. All right. Our next exercise. We're going to go into our upper body. We're going to be doing a supinated front raise. So supinated, if you remember from other exercises, means your palms are faced forward as opposed to back. Okay. So rotate your wrists so that the palms are out. And from here, we're just going to raise our arms straight out from our chest we're gonna lower them down, okay? So we're gonna do this for 10 as well. So we're starting down by our sides. Wrists are gonna stay forward the whole time. Ooh, sorry, hair's getting in my eye. All right, here we go. First round of 10, raising up to our chest, coming right back down to the outsides of our legs. Don't use momentum, use the strength. You'll feel this on the inside portion of your arm. Breathe. Control up, control down. Ten. Once you reach your ten, I want you to set your weights down completely and shake out those arms. So when we supinate. We feel everything a little bit more along the inside. Usually when we just do a regular front raise, you're just gonna feel it at the tops of that shoulder, like your shoulder pad. When you supinate, you're using a little bit more of your chest. So you're, you're using this area right here that connects on the inner part of your arm. So you're gonna feel that tug a little bit more internally. So if you're feeling it kind of right at your elbow joint, it's not necessarily a bad sign. Keep the elbows unlocked. That's where that lever, that tension is gonna be driving from. All right, 
So we're going back to those 1.5 deadlifts. Like I said, I'm gonna keep it at 1.5 this whole time, but if you ever feel like you want to try to do a little lifting with that back leg, or at least try to imagine you're lifting the back leg. How about that? Let's start with like a visualization of the back leg coming up. Eventually we will get there. So for now, if you need that toe down for balance, please do so. So my left leg is unlocked, toe is down, my back's gonna stay nice and flat. I'm moving from my hip bone, reaching, pulling and coming to standing, feeling this in the back of my left leg. 10 aside. Once you reach your 10, you're switching around, opposite side. Got my right leg forward now, my left leg is back. Hinging from the hips. Remember, keep your gaze a couple feet in front of you. With the two weights, it should be a little easier to keep your hips steady, to keep them from twisting. But then again, with the second weight, you are adding more resistance. So you're also feeling that. Hamstring should be burning. Once you finish your 10 and 10, shake up those legs a bit. Give yourself a moment before we go back into those supinated front raise. So rotate those wrists, palms are forward, shoulders are down, knees are unlocked. Second time through 10, coming up to chest tight, coming right back down outside of your hips. Inhale, exhale, make sure you're not just throwing your arms around. You're placing them with control. Ten total, shoulders down. And once you reach your ten, let those weights go, shake out those arms. Give yourself a breather, grab some water if you need it. We are, we are gonna be going through that one more time. One more opportunity to balance in these deadlifts. So I mentioned last time, so it is a little easier to keep your hip bones going in the same direction if you've got two weights. When you have one, Sometimes it's easy to open that hip. Usually I'm talking about trying to open that hip. That's less of a problem when you have two weights because that other side is kind of anchoring and dragging you down. But then you've got twice the weight loading the back of your leg. So that's what I meant about that hamstring kind of burning as you get closer to 10. Should really be feeling it at that point. Alrighty, so let's do it last time around. So weight in the left leg, right leg is trailing behind, toe is on the ground. Working leg is unlocked, but not bent. Gaze is forward, reach for those hips. 10 each side, this is our last set. Ten and switch. Make sure you're watching that upper back position too. Don't let that start rounding. Flat back from your tailbone to your shoulders or to the crown of your head. Stick inside last time. Ten and ten, shake of those legs. Give yourself a moment. Rotate those wrists. Palms are forward, shoulders are down, knees are unlocked. When you're ready, we got ten more of these supinated front raises. Left, get them done. Pull those shoulders away from your ears. Control.
10 and 10. Set the weights down. Shake it on out. Grab some water. I've got a lot of single arm and single leg stuff in this workout. I'm just noticing that now. It wasn't purposeful, so that's good. It's always good to work unilaterally. So in this next round, guys, we're gonna be doing our first move, we're gonna be doing combination lunge movement. We're gonna be doing a stationary lunge, but we're gonna add on an overhead press. So I'm just gonna demo for, demonstrate it for you quickly first. If you find that you lose your balance a little bit doing stationary lunges where you're not stepping in and out of them, just make sure you got a chair or like stand near something you can put a hand on. You're gonna have the dumbbell in one hand. It's gonna be in the hand of the back leg, okay? So you get into lunge position. I'm mocking like I have a weight in my hand. I'm gonna do my lunge. I'm gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna, as I'm coming up, I'm gonna press my arm overhead. I'm gonna add that overhead press, okay? Weight comes back down to my shoulder. I lunge as I stand, I press, pause, down, lunge, press, okay? So you wanna keep, you're holding that. Stationary lunge means you stay in the lunge and all you're doing is bending and extending that back leg. Okay, so you're staying in it the whole time. You do have that one free hand that doesn't have the weight, so that can be used for balance support if needed. We're gonna be doing eight on one side, and then we just flip it around. Make sure that you have a wide enough stance, especially in stationary lunges. Think like from your front toe to your back heel should be the length of one of your legs, okay? So especially, I've got really short legs. So when you're looking at me, it might seem like my stance is kind of short, but it's that's probably about the length of what I've got as a leg. Um, so think about that. If you've got long legs, your stride should be a bit longer. Enough so that when I go down, you kind of see 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle. That's pretty much what it should look like. The taller you are, the less you're going to be able to get perfect 90 degree angles, by the way. So if you're tall and someone told you that your front knee has to be directly over your ankle, it's a lie. Uh, yours is going to come forward a little bit. It's just because you have longer levers, okay? But do your best to think 90 degree angles, okay? So you think 90 degree angles, you'll get closer than being here. <laughs> okay, this is where I don't want you. I just want you back here. So eight and eight on both sides. And then I'll show you what motion number two is. We actually only need one bell for both of these exercises. So if you need to set one off to the side, go ahead and do that. But we're gonna get started with our first set stationary lunges. So I got my right leg back, right hand has my weight, left foot is forward. I'm coming down in my lunge. I'm coming up, standing, pressing overhead, finding that balance, keeping my shoulders and hips squared the whole time. Remember, we're doing eight. Think about going straight down. Once you get your eight, take your time, bring those feet together, switch around to the other side. So that's the best way to think about stationary lunges too. Don't try to think about rocking forward or back. Just think up and down, up and down. All right, weights in the other hand now. We're doing the lunge and we're pressing. First one is to kind of gain your balance. Get your groove. Eight and then bring those feet together, weight comes down. Now always remember, I don't care how low you get in your lunges, they could just be a dip. As long as you're in the right position, even if you're just going down a little bit, you're, you're, you're okay, you're in the right position. Okay, movement number two, we're doing a single arm bent over lateral raise, okay? So you're gonna bend forward like you're gonna do a bent over row. I prefer that you support your hand on something that's hard surface, like a desk, a chair, you could even put it on a wall. I'm just gonna put it on this rack of dumbbells since it's in front of me. Cause this is gonna keep that back nice and flat and steady, okay? So this is our starting position. Our weight starts down by the side. You're gonna raise that arm out to the side and then you're gonna lower it down. So similar to the last exercise, elbows unlocked so the arm is pretty straight, okay? Here we're gonna do 10 each side. So raising out to the side, squeeze, lower down. Out to the side, squeeze, lower down. Keep that back position the whole time. Breathe and lower. Keep the knees on lock. Okay, 
Once you have 10, come standing for a moment, catch your breath and let your back relax. Switch over to the opposite side, opposite arm. Opposite hand is gonna come on the desk or on the wall or on the chair, whatever you got. Bend forward, get that same flat back position. 10 on the second side, arm out to the side. So we'll squeeze from the back side now. Ten total. Once you get ten, come back up to standing, set the weight down, take a breather. So on that exercise, I kind of want you to think about you're using all the muscles, the opposing muscles to what we just did. So we did our supinated front raise, we felt everything on the front side. Now when we're doing this bent over lateral raise, we're using everything on the back side of those muscles. So all those opposing muscles. Hitting them from both sides tonight. All right, so we started off with some stationary lunges. Hopefully you guys did okay the first time around. It's all about setting yourself up properly. So take your time to kind of get yourself in the right position. If you need to relocate your feet after you kind of start, you need to pause and relocate your feet, that's fine. And like I said, just think about dipping from that back hip and that knee dipping down to the ground and driving through that. Don't think about coming forward and back. Just think about going down and up. When you're ready, we got our second set to do. Weights in the right side. We're dipping down, we're driving up. Eight on the right. Close that was more my left. The lunges you usually count whatever legs in front, not behind. Well, whichever. We're switching to the opposite side, whatever side you weren't on. Second round of eight. Once you get your eight and your eight, carefully bring your feet back together. Shake up those legs. Give yourself a moment. And we're gonna go right into that bent over lateral raise. So if you need to position yourself by the wall or by your desk chair, whatever you got, hand on something to support your back, leaning over, like you're gonna do a golf swing, arm comes out to the side. Ten each side on this one. Once you get ten on one side, you can stand up for a brief mo moment, reset your back, switch sides, and then find that same position. Knees unlocked, bent forward, flat back. Opposite side for ten. Ten. Once you get your ten, come to standing. Shake up those arms, relax. Feeling that more, like I said, on the back side of your arm, through the back of your shoulder. We'll take a moment, take a breather before we get into our last round of these. Shake it out. Grab water if you guys need it. I'm starting to notice that it's getting, it's staying light a little bit later now. We're like creeping. Every class it's like, you get a couple more minutes now of, of sunlight before it starts getting pitch black. Changing back. All right, whenever you guys are ready, set yourself up well, get that nice wide stance for that lunge. Support yourself, balance if you need to. 
hand in the right side, dipping down, driving up. Last time through, eight aside. Once you get eight, take your moment, switch around, get yourself set up, wide stance, toes both pointing, same direction, you know, rotating at the heels last time. Eight and eight, shake it out, relax those knees. Coming on over, we have one last time of our bent over lateral raise. So let's get that back supported with the hands. Knees are unlocked, nice flat back when you're ready. Out to the side for 10 on our right side, and then we switch. Ten, quick breather, let your back up, relax, find that same position on the other side, knees unlocked, nice flat back for 10. And once you get 10, Come on up, shake it on out. Give yourself a moment. Relax. All right, guys. So last set that we're gonna go into, it's a tri set, which means we've got three exercises, all of our smaller muscle groups. So we're gonna be doing some single leg calf raises. This is our last single sided motion, okay? So we're gonna go for 10 of our single leg calf raises, I encourage you to hold on to something. Try not to like death grip hold on to something, but you probably will need it for balance, okay? So when you do single leg calf raises, you're getting your hips over your standing leg. That's gonna be a locked out leg. And then what I do is I like to take my foot and kind of I wrap my toe around the back of my ankle just so I make sure that I'm kind of staying. If you have it free floating, a lot of times what happens is this leg ooh, starts throwing you off balance, but if you can do it and keep your leg right by your side, you're welcome to try it like that too. I just like the toe wrap, toe wrap method. So we're gonna do 10 on our right and then we're gonna switch. We're gonna do 10 on our left. So if you have something, just kind of briefly hold on to. Try not to do this though, don't lean into it. Keep that head stacked over your hips, over that foot so that all that weight is going onto that foot. But when you're ready, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna try 10. One side, and then we're gonna switch. We'll do 10 on our other side. This is super easy for you. You could always add a weight and put it in your hand. My guess is it's probably not super easy. Once you get 10, you can switch sides. If you guys need to flip around and have the opposite hand on support, you can. I'm just gonna stay in the same place. This is a little easier to demonstrate. Try to pause for just a moment on top. Tough, but just the one leg. Once you get both each side, shake out both legs. And then for our final two motions, you will need weights, grab those weights. We're gonna do some biceps and triceps tonight. So two weights, thumbs are gonna face forward. We're gonna go into a set of 12 hammer cur curls. So knees are unlocked, elbows are in. You're gonna curl up to your shoulders and release down for 12. Whenever you're ready, get started. Hammer curl. Hammer curl. 
once you reach 12, release your arms down, give you guys a second to catch up. Our last motion, we're gonna be doing double-sided tricep kickbacks. So tricep kickbacks, hands come up to the hips, elbows point back behind you. You're gonna lean forward just slightly, extend the arms straight back, bend and come back to your hips. Kick back for 12, working the back of those arms. Try to keep those elbows above your rib cage. Really feel that in that tricep. And once you reach 12, weights down, shake it on out. We're gonna take a breather and we're gonna do that two more times. Tricep of calf raises, hammer curls, and kick back. All right, so with these calf raises, see if you can, uh, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time, but see when you come up, see if you can feel like you can control. So you're not just falling back down. See if you can actually pause for one millisecond at the top of your calf raise. Remember, we're gonna try for 10 each side. So I'm starting with my left leg. I've got my right leg wrapped around, got my hand for balance support. I'm gonna come up, pause and then back down. Leg is straight. You about pushing your head up to the ceiling. Once you get 10, take a moment. Shake out that one side. Being a flip around, you have your opposite arm helping you balance, you can. Wrapping that second side, same thing for 10. Take a notice if you feel like you have more balance, less balance, if you're stronger, one side versus the other. And total. Once you get 10 and 10, take a moment. If you need to do some of those ankle circles a little bit, shake out the leg, feel free. And then when you're ready, grab onto those weights. We got 12 hammer curls and then 12 tricep kickbacks. Knees unlock, elbows are in, shoulders are down. Let's go for our 12 hammer curls. Once you reach your 12 with those arms hang for just a moment, and then you wanna bring your hands up to your hips, tilting forward slightly, get those elbows above your rib cage, and then reaching those arms back. Kick back for 12. Once you reach 12, both ways down. Shake up the arms. And relax. One more time through. Calf raises, curls and kick back. All right, you guys, whenever you're ready, this is our last set of motions where we start a cool down. Last time through, 10 and 10, pausing for a moment on top if you can. Think, drive your head up to the ceiling, grow taller every time. Last time, 10 calf raises aside.
once you get finished on one side, give yourself a moment. If you need to work out any cramps in that one side. Don't worry, we're gonna do our calf stretches tonight once we're done. And then once you reach your 10, 10, shake up the legs for a moment, grab onto those weights into this last round here. Knees unlocked, shoulders are down, curling up to your shoulders and release. Well, total. Once you reach 12, relax those arms, drop those shoulders away from your ears. When you're ready, hands up to the hips, elbows back, leaning forward slightly, keep those elbows lifted and extend. Last set of 12. Well, total. Nice, once you get done, shake out those arms. Take a moment, let me do some swings. All right, guys, before we do our seated stretches, I do wanna do our, our um, calf stretches with the dumbbell, just because we did all those single leg calf exercises just right now. So one weight down, Heel down, toe up, we're gonna start with our straight leg. So heel down, toe up, and then just leaning into it just a little bit. Feel that stretch in the back of your calf. It's probably a little tight right now. And just breathe. And then you can go ahead, switch sides when you're ready, heel down, toe up. Uh, always find one side is gonna be tighter than the other two. Just the way we walk and the way we stand, the way we do things, we don't even realize we have more weight on one side versus the other. Now let's push back to that first side, this time bent knee. So getting more down into that Achilles down by your ankle. The bent knee, feel that tug in the bottom of your ankle. And switching sides, peel down to a bent knee. And then coming back up to standing. You can move that weight out of the way now. And then let's do our seated stretches. So if you guys need to grab, I need to grab my chair. I hit it from myself over here. Go through our seated stretches. When you're ready, sitting up nice and tall, let's extend our right leg out, heel down, toe up, flat back, leaning forward. And then coming up with switch sides, opposite leg forward. And then having that leg come in, let's do our hip stretch, right ankle up above the knee, that hip drop down, add some pressure if you need it. And adding our spinal rotation, left our yeah, left hand on the outside of the right knee, reaching behind, looking over your right shoulder. And back to center, untwist. Just switching sides, left knee up. 
pushing that hip down. And when you're ready, adding that twist. Right hand on the outside of the left knee, looking over the left shoulder. And coming back through center, untwisting those legs, shaking them out a little bit. Bringing that right hand across the body, hug it in nice and close. And then switching sides. And then two hands behind your back, toss those fingers together, drop your shoulders, pull the arms out and away. And then release, let's round the back, push forward. Release those shoulder blades. And then arms come overhead. Reaching over the right side. Through the center, reaching over the left side. And one more time, reaching all the way up, inhale. And exhale, release everything out and down. Awesome job, guys. Thanks so much for joining.